Hey folks, Real Honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin. This is the third part and the final part of my Top 25 Worst Champions in Wrestling History series. Where, if you've noticed, I've done... For a Top 25, I actually went through it pretty damn quick. Um, I covered like near, like 11 in the first part, 8, 9 in this part, <clears throat> and now I'm down to the final 5. So, realistically... There isn't a ton more to cover. I am going to go on a couple scathing rants, but I don't know how long this one's going to be because top five, I can only find so much to talk about because some of these I covered before. Um, I'm not going to mention Lex Luger because he had some good runs as U.S. champion. Much as I personally do not like Lex Luger at all, I think Luger's a piece of shit. I got to give credit where credit is due on that. <clears throat> and at least with his first WCW title reign, he had some... Decent matches. Not some great matches, but he has some decent matches. And including a good one where he lost the title to Sting at Super Bowl II. So he's not on here. But I am giving an honorable mention. The honorable mentions that I've done, it's actually more like a top 30, but, <clears throat> you know, whatever. I can do honorable mentions. It's my show, and I'm having fun. Um, <clears throat> honorable mention goes to Harvey Whippleman, who wrestled as Harvina, you know, the idiot that he is. And where he won the WWE Women's Championship. Now look, the creative probably just told him to go out there and you're going to win the Women's Championship because we don't want to make our women's title mean anything. Harvey Whippleman always just disgusted me. I found him to be a scuzzy, dirty looking, <clears throat> just filthy looking person on TV. He just, he, he could cut a good enough promo and he made Giant Gonzalez seem tolerable. <clears throat> And Giant Gonzalez, from what I heard, is a pretty nice guy. But, yeah, Harvey Whippleman, just, I never care for the guy. One of the worst managers ever. Though I will give him credit for <coughs> getting some people over. I just never care for the guy. The guy was, ugh. And just, honestly, him as women's champion was ridiculous. He could have been any guy as women's champion. It wouldn't have really mattered at that point. Um, but yeah, Harvey Whippleman gets a special mention. <coughs> so now we go to number five. Ultimate Warrior is WWE champion. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm kind of bending the little thing that I did <coughs> with um, War, you know, with when I said that Luger's first WCW title reign doesn't deserve a mention. Even though I don't really care for Luger, I really don't care for Warrior. Now, I don't care for Luger just a little bit more because as far as I know, Ultimate Warrior never killed anybody. He did break Bobby Heenan's neck and wish death on him and everything because Warrior's a piece of shit. But <clears throat> his WWE championship run was crap. When he won it, the crowd exploded because he beat Hogan. <clears throat> and he had some good house show matches and this kind of stuff, but he had to have so many people lead him and work with him and everything. He couldn't do a goddamn interview and make any sense. He couldn't do anything in the ring without the right guy. I mean, Rick Rude. Rick Rude faced him at SummerSlam 90, <clears throat> and that wasn't a very good match. Because it seemed like the match ended about halfway before it should have. It seemed like it should have gone about 20 minutes, and I think it went about maybe 10, 11 it didn't seem to go very long. Um, but I just, I can't name anything memorable of Warrior uh, Warrior's title reign except when he won the title at Mania 6 and when he lost it to Slaughter. And even that match where he lost it to Slaughter, I mean, that wasn't very good. But Slaughter had been not in a WWE ring for a while. And even though he worked <coughs> in AWA and a couple other companies... He also had the Hasbro G.I. Joe thing, and he was not in the best shape at that point. He'd been in the business for years, though, so that's expected. But just nothing really that memorable in between him winning and losing a championship. And sorry, Warriors title reign, the fact that he was never appreciative of it, and I'm sorry, he just never seemed appreciative of it, that's why I'm putting him on here. Because it, it for all the, you know, the launching that they gave him, at Mania 6, oh, we're going to go with you, and then he <clears throat> pulls the shit that he pulls. He can't do anything as champion. Sorry, the guy couldn't work. The guy just flat out couldn't work. The guy was absolute garbage. Um, And show your warrior spirit, yeah, bullshit. And by the way, you can check that out in Rapid Fire that I did. <clears throat> it was episode 39, 38 or 39. <clears throat> 
It's the one where I talk about Neville possibly getting its release from WWE, which I'm recording this as of the 13th of October, Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th, even though it'll be up after that. Um, <clears throat> just Warrior, just, uh, I just, I mean, I lost my train of thought, but just Warrior's just such shit. He was such a shit champion. There's a reason why he was only a champion once. I mean, they could have given it back to him at SummerSlam 92, but that would have been a bad idea. Because then he got busted for buying HGH or Roy's or whatever from some doctor. And him and Davey Boy got fired. Because Warrior snitched uh, Davey Boy off also. Because that's just the kind of guy Warrior was. But anyway. Ultimate Warrior's WWE champion. The reason it's number five is probably <coughs> the... The reason he might actually be considered the worst WWE champion ever, I mean, yes, this is considering Vince and all these other guys that have been champion. People say, what about Great Khali? Great Khali deserves a mention as WC or as World Heavyweight Champion, but guess what? Khali only had it for two goddamn months. As much as I don't like Khali, Khali only had it for two damn months. And at least the India market had a boom because Kali was champion. Like, ratings were way up and stuff like that. So it sort of made sense, even though Kali was a shit worker. With Warrior, it's like, <clears throat> they went from Hogan, who could work with the right guy, even though Hogan worked better in Japan because he worked as a heel. They went to Warrior, and I'm sorry, Warrior just couldn't work. He couldn't carry the load. <clears throat> he wasn't a good WWE champion at all. He can call me biased all you damn well want, but this is my list. Number four, David Arquette is WCW champion now. Now, I've covered this before. I covered this in a video last year, a 16-year reflection on um, Arquette being <coughs> the WCW champion. And, look, I don't have any issue with Arquette the person. It was like an eight-minute rant that I cut. I don't have any issue with Arquette the person. The more you find out about the guy, you realize he was a passionate wrestling fan. He didn't want to do this. <coughs> and creative put the title on him anyway. Like, the booking people put the title on him anyway. Whoever came up with this idea, whether it was, I don't know if it was Tony Schiavone, I doubt it. I don't know if it was Russo. I don't know who it was. I don't know if Bischoff suddenly came up with the idea. I don't know if the powers of be, if, you know, the people, like, above everybody, like, you know, above the creative staff, said, yeah, Arquette's here, put the world title on him. I don't know who came up with the idea. Whoever did is a fucking idiot. That's the bottom line. But is that a knock against Arquette? No. David Arquette does not deserve the hatred directed towards him for being cast in a role. And he took the payoffs that he got from any TV appearances and any pay-per-view appearances. And he put them toward he put them towards families of either fallen wrestlers or even draws <coughs> who got paralyzed in a ring uh, because of a freak accident. That is the kind of good uh, good guy that he was. So I give him credit for that. It's not knocking David Arquette. This whole thing of him winning the championship, though, was absolute shit. Oh, we got mainstream publicity. We got all this kind of stuff. And you had to do it at the expense of your world championship. If Arquette had helped DDP or helped somebody win the world championship, I would have understood that. You know, have him have him in the corner. Have him do this kind of stuff. Have him do a comedy tag thing. Have it be Jarrett. You could have had it be Jarrett and Bischoff. Versus Ar DDP and Arquette. Arquette helps Bischoff, you know, or not helps Bischoff, but helps DDP win the championship back. Okay. But they didn't do that. They didn't do that, <clears throat> and it was complete shit. They gave it to Arquette, and it was crap. And I mean, you can say whatever you want. I mean, if it was Russo that came up with it, I mean, it, it's like he can defend it all he goddamn well once. It was a stupid idea. Oh, we got mainstream publicity, bro. Yeah, and look what look what happened to the company, Russo. Oh yeah, right. You were out of power within a few months. After that, I mean, what was it like six months and you were gone? Maybe five months. Arquette as champion was ridiculous. That's not a knock against the man himself. Man, the man himself seems like a pretty nice guy. Good for him for being such a great wrestling fan and doing the right thing by taking care of various wrestlers because he respected the business. <clears throat> he didn't want to do it. They cast him in that role, and the company has only itself to blame. I will not blame Arquette for this. And then we go number three, Ed Ferrara as Oklahoma as the WCW Cruiserweight Champion. Ed Ferrara is one of the biggest pieces of shit ever in wrestling. 
he was more out of shape than Dutch Mantel because at least Dutch Mantel was tough. Ed Ferrara couldn't make it as a goddamn wrestler. <clears throat> and then he decided to be on the creative staff in WWE. You know, him and Russo were... They came up with some ideas that worked. I will say that much. Focusing on, you know, the shock rate, the shock, you know, TV aspect of it sometimes worked. Not the Terry Reynolds, you know, miscarriage angle. And not quite a bit of other stuff, but there were some things that they came up with that were fine. <clears throat> but Ed Ferrara as Oklahoma, if I could have physically reached through the TV, I would have strangled the guy. Or at least slapped him repeatedly. Maybe I just would have done what Cornette did and spit on him, and then because Ed Ferrara's a gutless coward, he didn't react. He just let the spit run down his face because he's a coward. Ed Ferrara. As a cruiserweight champion, this dough, this doughy, moronic, pasty, fat fuck. As a cruiserweight champion, you might as well have just done what you did with the TV championship and thrown it in the goddamn trash. And I mean, even Medusa was cruiserweight champion at one point, I think for only like a day or two. I'm not going to knock Medusa because whether I agree with a woman winning a, man, uh, you know, a male title or not, at least Medusa was legit tough, even at that point. You know, near the end of her career, because she got into monster truck, you know, stuff, and good for her because it worked out a lot better for her. That at least would have made more sense because she was a legit wrestler. Ed Ferrara was not, and I don't know if it was people above him that made him cruiserweight champion. I don't have a clue, but if it was Russo that booked him, oh yeah, Ed win the cruiserweight title, yada yada yada. Titles don't mean anything. And then, and then what does Russo tweet out about Enzo once Enzo? Um, <coughs> Loses the cruiserweight title. Why would you take the title off of him, off of Enzo? He is dead. But titles don't matter to you, Russo. The wrestling doesn't matter to you. Ed Ferrara is just disgusting. And the fact that he was allowed to even be on TV, it's no wonder WCW's ratings started to go into the shitter. It's no wonder the people were tuning into WCW, but were tuning out soon afterwards. The ratings ticked up a little bit, but they were never going to match what w what WCW had done at the height when it was beating WWE week in and week out and week in and week out. But Ed Ferrara. If I could have said something to him, even as a wrestling fan, I would have been like, you know, how dare you, you stupid motherfucker. Mock a man's health. Do this kind of stuff. Just because you had to work with the guy, JR, and maybe you didn't like him did not mean you could have... <clears throat> mocked him, mocked his football references, this kind of stuff, whatever, but not mocked the facial expressions for an illness that he overcame, and you probably would just lay down and die because you're a gutless, cowardly bitch. That's the kind of person Ed Ferrara is. And I'm sorry, if you're a fan of Ed Ferrara, well, good for you. I don't fucking care if you are. I'm not saying you guys can't be a fan of him, but I will not be a fan of somebody that mocked the Bell's palsy. Of a guy that may not be perfect. And I'm not saying JR is perfect. Like, you know, no human being's perfect. I'm sure as hell not. But JR seemed like he loved the business, still loves the business. Dedicated himself to it, worked hard. <clears throat> In any role he was given, he worked hard. What did Ed Ferrara ever do? Oh, yeah, he hasn't done much of anything. Since leaving WWE, did that little thing in WCW and then got released from his contract. And then went to NWA TNA for a little bit and was an announcer. No wonder the announcing in the beginning, besides Tanae and Don West, was asked because Ed Ferrara was doing that. Because Ed Ferrara is a terrible announcer. Is Ed Ferrara the worst announcer in the world? No. I mean, he might be worse than Mark Madden. Because Mark Madden at least made me mad enough to, you know, want to see somebody beat him up. I may not like Mark Madden, but Ed Ferrara was worse. Mongo was worse. A lot of people were worse, actually. Josh Matthews might even be worse, because Josh Matthews had been at longer. <clears throat> but Ed Ferrara just was no good at anything. And the fact that he was a champion at all in WCW shows, there's no, it's no wonder why that company fell. And, oh, why aren't you tuning in? Why don't you guys enjoy this? Why are people laughing? Why are the events not drawing? I don't know. Maybe because from top to bottom, nobody wants to do anything to make the company better. The talents were trying their best. But it was a depleted roster. And Ed Ferrara is Cruiserweight Champion. Again, might as well just throw that title in the trash. Guy was a piece of shit. And he deserves every damn bit of hate that he gets. 
every damn bit. Now, he didn't kill anybody, so I'm not going to say let's go that far. <clears throat> but he deserves every bit of hate he gets. Number two, Sable as WWE Women's Champion. Because the fucking moronic skank. And I'm going to call her that. Yeah, her and Brock are happy together. Good for them. Stupid blonde, stupid blonde plastic Barbie doll. Got paid tons of money. Got paid over a million dollars to post for Playboy. Why the hell anybody would want to see her in Playboy? Sorry, you guys wanted to see her in Playboy? Fine. But I just don't get it. Sable was a butt ugly son of a bitch. She was a butt ugly bitch is what she was. Couldn't cut a goddamn promo. Didn't want to learn how to do any bumps. <clears throat> Didn't want to take any bumps. She managed to powerbomb Mark Merrow, nearly dropping him on his goddamn head because Sable didn't know how to fucking work at all. And all the announcers trying to pump up Sable. <clears throat> oh, she's worked so hard. She's doing so good in the ring. I hope people got paid extra for that. Because nobody with a straight damn face could have been able to say that about Sable. Sable was garbage. And there's, it's no wonder the women's championship went by the wayside. You know, <clears throat> even after Sable was... I mean, yeah, they had other women win it or whatever, but it took till, like, Lita beating Stephanie McMahon for the title to gain any credibility. I mean, and even then, I don't think Lita had it very long... <clears throat> and this is all due respect to women like Ivory and Molly Holly and others. And you know, Victoria and stuff like that. I mean, you know, they, they came later. Molly Holly's title reign especially came later. Ivory, I think, had some time in 99. And Jacqueline and stuff like that. Those women were legit tough. Sable did not deserve the push that she got. And I don't care how many ratings she drew. I don't give a shit. <clears throat> it was a bunch of morons that were tuning in to watch a woman that, sorry, was fucking ugly. And you need to get your goddamn eyes checked if you think that she wasn't ugly. Now, we all have different opinions. And it's cool if you guys did not It did like Sable. I didn't. <clears throat> and I just didn't see the appeal. Ugly woman. Couldn't cut a goddamn promo. Had no stage presence. Couldn't <clears throat> do anything right in the ring. Didn't want to get hurt. Didn't want to bump. Luna and... Poor Luna Vachon. That was just terrible that Luna had a job to Sable. Just nobody, nobody was a worse women's champion than Sable. I don't care. Not Kelly Kelly, and all due respect to Kelly Kelly, who was very nice. Not Candace Michelle, who, you know, they at least tried. I mean, <clears throat> hell, even Eva Marie would have been better than Sable. And you know why Eva Marie would have been better? Because Eva at least took bumps. She didn't take very good bumps. She couldn't run the ropes for shit. But at least Eva Marie would have been better. But no, <clears throat> you have Sable as the women's champion. Now, Grant, this is back in 98, 99 and stuff like that. And she... I just don't understand why the ratings were so damn high for her. Oh, the teacher spot her. Oh, she has the pace. She's this kind of stuff. Dude... You put an open flame 10 feet from her, and guess what? It would have melted her. It would have been like the end of the Raiders of the goddamn Lost Ark. That's what it would have been like. Except it would have been more horrifying. Actually, I would have been surprised if we just found, you know, a plastic, <coughs> you know, a plastic undercarriage underneath also. Because she couldn't have had much of a day. She couldn't have had m much of a body at all. Now, again, her and Brock are happy. If they're happy together with two children, that's great. I'm referring to Sable the person in the wrestling business. Because she couldn't do a goddamn thing right. I couldn't, I couldn't stand Sonny. But at least Sonny could cut a promo. At least Sonny appreciated wrestling. I'm not saying I care for Sonny now. And anybody that wants to watch her Skype, sorry, there's something wrong with you. But Sable's absolute garbage. This one's going on a bit long, but I got number one here. And it shouldn't be shocking at all. No, it's not Kevin Nash. No, it's not a whole bunch of people. Vince Russo is WCW champion. Because one of the biggest, most worthless con artists ever in wrestling, Vince Russo. <clears throat> Somebody that tried to claim that he fixed the wrestling business, he did this and he did that. Was he a part of something? Sure, because Vince McMahon went insane and used some ideas that he actually thought were brilliant from Vince Russo. Vince did emphasize stuff on, like, various talents and everything and help people get, you know, characters that at least got more established on screen. If Russo did that and had a hand in that, okay, good for him. 
But the guy has such a fucking ego about himself. He still believes that he could save wrestling even now. He couldn't save WCW. Whether, you know, the, the higher-ups the higher ups wanted to keep the company or not, Russo was in over his goddamn head and didn't have a clue what he was doing. He almost sank Impact the few times he was on creative. He almost sank it into irrelevancy. It's been trying to build itself back up for forever. I mean, it's still trying to crawl out of the depths of what Russo did, but also what Dixie Carter did. Let's not just put it all on Russo, because Dixie Carter... Biggest, you know, one of the biggest conners, one of the biggest bitches ever in wrestling. That's including all the men. Vince Russo, though, is WCW champion. People say, oh, but Vince McMahon made himself a champion. And then relinquished it a little bit later. And it led to an angle where Triple H got the title back. And it was part of a storyline. With Vince, it didn't work. With Russo, that is. With Russo, it didn't work. And, oh... He, of course, he did some stuff on Stevie Ray's Stand Up For Greatness podcast, which, by the way, was great. Um, <clears throat> encourage everybody to check that out. Stevie Ray's Stand Up For Greatness podcast was wonderful. Him and his co-host, Matt Kapulski, 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 I believe. I'm, not that they're ever going to watch this, but if anybody sends this clip, I apologize if I got his name wrong. But they're both really good people. Russo's trying to say that, oh, Stevie Ray, did, did you not like that I was, that you were never champion, but I was? Russo, if you were not brought in by Vince McMahon, you know what you would have been doing? You would have been managing a video story. You would have been writing for a magazine. <clears throat> you would have been doing a whole bunch of shit that no one cared about. And now he's on a podcast that seemed to be losing viewers left and right, left and right. He, of course, is implying that he doesn't understand the fascination with Finn Balor. He doesn't understand Triple H's fasc fascination with Finn Balor. And thinks that maybe Triple H is attracted to Finn Balor. And you wonder why the company won't call you back for a damn role, Russo. You wonder why they won't let you come back? Because you say you can save wrestling. You fucking idiot. If you took the words bro and swerve and actually, you know, took any... If, if you took any irrelevant words that you said out of your podcast, do you know how long it'd be? Probably about three minutes. Of course, Russo's never going to watch this, but I'll say this. I don't give a fuck if anybody thinks that Vince Russo's right. You guys want to be fans of him? Cool. I'm not going to tell people they can't be fans of Russo. But I've never been a fan of the guy. Now, again, and I said, I said some stuff like this in another rant, a scathing rant that I did <coughs> in a rapid fire. I don't blame Russo for Owen's heart, Owen Hart's death. That, that's one thing I, I, I will defend him on because I've never understood that. He would not have not done that. As much as I don't like Russo, there's no way he would have done that. He's not that heartless. He's an idiot when it comes to wrestling. He doesn't know anything. Clearly he doesn't. Or if he knew anything, he actually would have been able to make you know other companies better. But no. He sank a couple companies. Helped sink a couple coming. He at least helped sink WCW. Even if WCW was unsalvageable by that point, he didn't help it. They made a mistake bringing him in. And then he makes himself WCW champion right before he leaves. I think he was gone very, very soon after he became champion. Because he had a concussion. You know, well, okay, Russo, I didn't even know he had a goddamn brain in there to concuss. So I didn't have a clue that that, that, that happened. I don't know how in the world that would happen. I mean, he wore a helmet, which is probably, you know, probably explains, you know, how his time in school went. I mean, sorry, but Russo doesn't ex exactly strike me as intelligent. <clears throat> but no, he, the people, and I, and I know a couple people that have worked for Vince Russo, and they're nice people. But sorry, Russo himself is an idiot and the worst champion of all time. I can't stand Vince Russo, and I don't care if anybody has a problem with it. Because I'm not telling you guys you can't be fans of him. But the reason he's my worst champion of all time, or worst cha you know, worst champion of wrestling, you know, in wrestling history, the reason he is, there was no reason for it. None. M m some of these, I mean, I can't see any reason for. But Russo, I especially can't, because what it was is by that point, they had had so many damn title changes that... Russo making himself champion would have, if that had happened and there had only been two title changes and, like, say, Russo was the third, 
it still wouldn't have made any damn sense, but it's like they hot potatoed so damn much. They were like, oh, okay, Russo will just make himself champion. <clears throat> and then wonder why that didn't work. Russo's a goddamn idiot. Goddamn idiot. Worst champion of all time. Can't stand the guy. Again, not going to blame him for Ono Hart's death. Um, like some people have. I've even seen fans do that. And I'm like, guys, I'm sorry, unless evidence comes out, and I mean strong evidence that something that that happened for, you know, that that was the case, stop. Come on. Let, let, let's be civil about this. Calling him the worst booker in the world, calling him, you know, worst creative in the, you know, worst part of creative in the world, <clears throat> in the world of wrestling, calling him the worst champion ever, calling him one of the worst people to ever, you know, be in the wrestling business, sure. But to call him a murderer of Owen Hart, no. That's one thing I will say that he is not. But as far as the champion, yeah, Russo's a piece of shit. And it figures that Russo and Ed Ferrara would be so damn close to each other. I almost actually put Ed Ferrara number two, but I figured I had to put Sable number two because <clears throat> those it, the top four are actually all tied together because it all happened under Russo's watch. Now, sure, in WWE, it's, Vin, it's Vince McMahon. It's called Vince the Intelligent Vince. Even as much as I think McMahon's losing it, it's still his call. Russo made... Some decisions that worked because McMahon was able to, you know, twist them around and make them presentable. But when Russo left McMahon's watchful eye, what happened? Oh, yeah. He had no filter. He didn't know what the hell he was doing. <clears throat> he made titles meaningless, but then has the nerve to say, now, that Enzo Amore. That Enzo Amore. The heat is dead with Enzo and they shouldn't have taken the title off of Enzo. But if the titles doesn't matter... Russo, then why the hell would it matter if he, if Enzo lost it? Quit contradicting yourself. Not that not that he could actually spell contradiction without putting bro after every single letter. Anyway, that's what I gotta say. So I hope you have enjoyed this top twenty five worst champions in wrestling history list. Do you agree? Do you disagree with what I said? Are there some people I left out that you wish I would have talked about? Let me know in the comments. Give me your guys' list. I might even do a fans pick um, list at some point. I continue this I continue this series. But anyway, like, share, comment, subscribe. Twitter links in the description. It's been real honesty with John Ritlin. I'm John Ritlin. I will see you soon.